Have you ever prayed and you just feel like your prayers just hit the ceiling and bounce right back? Do you ever feel that your prayers, God's not even listening? Well, God doesn't hear my prayers. Hogwash. By faith, we become righteous, the scripture says. And the the prayers of the righteous availeth much. You know how many times I've heard people say, well, it's all about the glory of God. And they'll say, well, that person didn't get healed and it's going to bring God glory. You know what Jesus says? That God gets glory when your prayers are answered. Why, why do we not get the answers to our prayers? This is a critical question. And I want, today I want to address this uh, question. And uh, so thank you guys for joining us. My name is Zach Spiegel with Boulders and Line Ministries. If you don't know who we are, uh, we do missions to unreached people groups, and we have a men's discipleship home called The Barracks, where we help guys overcome drug and alcohol addictions. So if you guys want to become a sponsor, you can make a donation at bombzs.com or boldersandlineministries.com, and you can go to our candle website, 3rcandles.com, and you can buy a candle there and support drug recovery. So let's get right into the teaching. Our prayers answered I'm gonna to try to keep this video a little short I I don't think I could answer that question uh, within a 10 minute video uh, completely thoroughly but what I do want to talk about is um, what Jesus said okay so first of all there are a lot of things that we teach in our churches that we that people speak from the pulpit that is just outright not what Jesus said. Just not what Jesus said. The disciples asked these questions too. Okay? This is not a, a new question. This is a question that even the disciples asked Jesus. And Jesus gave an answer. And we're going to read a few scriptures. And what's going to happen is people are going to get offended. I'm going to read these scriptures. People are going to be offended whenever they hear what Jesus has to say. But I want to challenge you because the disciples had to make a decision that they were going to hear what Jesus had to say and then continue to follow him. So I challenge you that today when you hear what Jesus says concerning these things, that you also will not be offended and that you will say, you know what? I want to grow deeper. I want to go deeper with God. And that hopefully this teaching today will spur you on to dig deeper. Again, I cannot answer all the mysteries of the gospel within a 10 minute video. So if you're hungry, stay tuned, come back for more. I want to keep teaching on things like this. But first thing I want to open up with is this, that people are always coming up with excuses for why they cannot receive answers to their prayers. Things like, well, maybe it's not God's will, right? Um, or maybe, you know, it's not the timing of God. Uh, or they'll say things like, um, well, that promise was written to somebody else. I remember telling somebody one time, uh, you know, God doesn't want us to be barren or, or miscarry. The scripture says in the book of Exodus, you will not be barren or miscarry. If you keep my commandments, you will not be barren or miscarry. Uh, I'll pop the the, uh, the the scripture reference will be on the screen. I don't have it right here, but to save time, we'll keep going. Um, you will not be barren or miscarry. So I remember telling somebody this one time, and they said, well, who was that written to? And what they were trying to say was, in context, when you write that scripture, it was written to the Israelites, so therefore, maybe it doesn't belong to us, right? That's what they're trying to say. So, yeah, the book of Exodus was written to the Israelites, okay? But you know what Paul says? That a true Jew is not by blood, but a true Jew is by faith. Again, I'll put the scripture right there on the screen so you can look it up for yourself. A true Jew is not by blood. But a true Jew, let me just let me just go find that scripture real quick. So I think it's over in Romans uh, chapter 3 or 5. Oh yeah, right here. Romans chapter 2, verse 29. 
No, a true Jew is one whose heart is right with God. And true circumcision is not merely obeying the letter of the law. Rather, it is a change of heart produced by the Spirit. So guess what? If you have faith in Jesus, now you are a true Jew, which means that all of the Old Testament promises belong to you. Okay, so, but, but that's beside the point. Let's let's just let's just say they, they don't apply to you. Okay, let's let's. I'm gonna read a passage here, Matthew chapter 15, verse 21 through 28. This is, should be exciting to you because we always want to come up with some reason why we don't get our prayers answered. What if? What if that is exactly what the devil wants, is for you to come up with some reason why you can't get your prayers answered? We need to be like the woman in this story I'm about to read to you. Matthew chapter 15, verse 21 through 28 says, Then Jesus left Galilee and went north to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Gentile woman who lived there came to him pleading, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David, for my daughter is possessed by a demon that torments her severely. Number one thing I want you to notice, this woman, Jesus praises her later on. Take note of what she says. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me, son of David. Mercy is what causes us to have, mercy is the reason why we get healed. Okay? It, mercy is what it is. It, when you get healed, it's mercy. Just know that. Verse 23. But Jesus gave her no reply. Not even a word. Now think about that for a second. Have you ever prayed and you just feel like your prayers just hit the ceiling and bounce right back? Do you ever feel that your prayers, God's not even listening? Jesus was, it, it, he was ignoring her. <laughs> Jesus was ignoring her. You know that Jesus we talk about is always nice and things like that? He was ignoring her, okay? Watch this. Then his disciples urged him to send her away. Tell her to go away, they said. She is bothering us with all her begging. This woman was persistent. She understood one thing. Mercy is what she needed for her daughter to be healed. She also didn't give up. She was nagging. I mean, she was the annoying person. She's like, you know, have you ever had your kids come up to you and just tap on you? Daddy, 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 daddy. It won't stop. That's, that's this woman right here, okay? <laughs> then Jesus said to the woman, I was sent only to help God's lost sheep, the people of Israel. Did you know that that Jesus came to, Jesus just gave her the reason he was there. He spoke to her and told her his purpose for coming. Watch this. I was sent only to help God's lost sheep. I mean, if you want to go down theology real quick, Jesus could be defining theology right now. That Jesus was sent only to help God's lost sheep. I mean, that's a if if Jesus doesn't lie and he said that to her, why does she feel like she could keep going for this? You know? I mean, have you ever gotten a word from God and then you decided to still keep going after it? I mean, think about this for a minute. Most people when they pray, they don't even hear anything from God. They just assume, well, maybe it's not God's will. Jesus right now is telling her it's not the will of God. That's what she's hearing. Think for a second. I always tell people that Jesus never taught this. But if you think about it, right here, he's saying to her, it's not the will of God for you to get healed because you're not a Jew. Think about that for a second. I was sent only to help God's lost sheep, the people of Israel. In other words, if you're not people of Israel, this, prom, this thing you're asking for doesn't belong to you. That's what he told her. But she came and worshipped him, pleading again, Lord, help me. Jesus responded, it isn't right to take food from the children and throw it to the dogs. This, this is insane. Jesus is calling her a dog. <laughs> She's... He's comparing the children, the people of Israel to children and comparing her to a dog. 
Have you ever have you ever prayed to God and you heard God call you a dog? If you haven't heard that, which most likely you haven't, uh, if you've never heard God tell you that, then maybe there's hope for you. Because this woman, she got something. She replied, watch this, watch this. She replied, that's true, Lord. But even dogs are allowed to eat the scraps that fall beneath their master's table. Oh, man. You know what she was believing for? She was believing that the goodness of God was so good that it would, that the Israelites couldn't even contain it. That it's like my kids, man. When they eat, I, this is so true. We got a little dog named Rocky, and my my kid, she's messy. You know, we, we take her out of the car, out of the seat. The first thing that dog does. Boom! Beelines right down to that into that 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 uh, seat, that chair, high chair, and start <laughs> licking all the food out of there, man. Why? He knows. He knows that the people, the children, are going to spoil the food. <laughs> he, the dog knows that there's going to be such an abundance of food. <laughs> then there's gonna be something left over. I mean, he runs for that food. I mean, he's expecting the food. This is that woman. You don't see my kids doing that. You know what my you know you see my kids doing? Dad, is the food ready? Oh, is the food ready? Oh, we're hungry. I mean, they complain the whole time. You're cooking for them. That's what we are like, right? The children of God always complaining, never thankful. But that dog. He knows. He knows. I just picked up that little two-year-old out of that seat. He knows. There's a whole treasure right there in that seat. And he, he just gets after it, man. He doesn't ask me. He never complained. He just goes for it. That's this woman. She knows. There's going to be such an abundance that the people of Israel won't even be able to contain it. And that the, that the food that they scorn. This is so powerful. The food and the blessing that they scorn, that they just toss to the side, will be enough to save her. Look at Jesus' response. Dear woman, your faith is great. <laughs> your request is granted. I like the, the New English, the English Standard Version. Let's let's go or, or there's there's another um let me see if I can find the, the, the cross reference here. Uh, your request is granted and her daughter was instantly healed. Mark 7. Let's go over to Mark 7. That's the parallel. Mark 7, 24. Watch this. Watch this. Yes! That's true, Lord. But even the dogs under the table are allowed to eat the scraps from the children's plates. And Jesus says, good answer. <laughs> I like it. Good answer. Now go home, for the demon has left your daughter. And when she arrived, she found her little girl lying quietly in the bed, and the demon was gone. Good answer. So we have slightly different versions here. But he told her, you have great faith. Your faith is great. Listen, Jesus always marveled at little faith and great faith. So the next time uh, someone tells you that the Old Testament scriptures, the promises of the Old Testament don't apply to you as a New Testament believer, just remember this, because this woman was a Gentile. She was not, she was not an Israelite. But we already learned from Romans chapter 2 that a true Jew is one who has faith. So what? G the reason why, you have to understand this, the reason why this woman's daughter got healed was because of her faith. And the Bible says that by faith, that's where the true Jew comes in. This woman was more of a Jew, more of an Israelite than any of these other people because of her faith. That's what made her qualify. You don't qualify by birth. You don't qualify by race. You don't qual you qualify by grace and by the faith that you have in Jesus and in God. Watch this, Matthew 20. I'm gonna teach you another thing. So, what do we learn about this woman? What do we learn about faith? Number one, faith is persistent. You hear that? Faith is persistent. 
if you're not persistent and if you don't if you if you give up then it's not faith okay faith doesn't give up okay faith doesn't give up all right Matthew 20, and also faith doesn't give up even when it has a perceived word from God that doesn't seem to line up with mercy I mean anybody else reading that scripture and think to yourself man that doesn't sound like Jesus it's because it's not the way Jesus was listen <laughs> Jesus was trying to get her to a certain point faith why because he was right he only came to help the lost sheep of Israel God's lost sheep and the only way to be an Israelite is to have faith to have faith that's what made her qualify quick coming up with excuses for why you can't have anything also if it doesn't sound like God's listening that's not a good answer well God doesn't hear my prayers hogwashed by faith we become righteous the scripture says and the the prayers of the righteous availeth much. All right, go over to Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. In the morning, as Jesus was returning to Jerusalem, he was hungry, and he noticed a fig tree beside the road. He went over to see if there were any figs, but there were only leaves. And then he said to it, May you never bear fruit again. Hold on a second. This is interesting to me. Uh, I don't think it says it right here in this particular translation. But in one, one passage... It actually says, because it was not in season. That's very interesting to me. That Jesus still cursed this fig tree, even though it was not in season. Um, then he said to it, May you never bear fruit again. And immediately, the fig tree withered up. The Bible says in another, uh, another parallel version of the story, it says that it came back the next day, and it was withered. Verse 20 says, The disciples were amazed when they saw this and asked, how did the fig tree wither so quickly? I want you to know this. Remember the question we asked earlier. The disciples asked important questions. The disciples asked very important questions. It's important that we know the questions that they ask because they're asking the same questions that we're asking. Don't you want to know why the fig tree died? I mean, you it withered right away, right? And you want to say, why did it happen? Or why did he do that? Look at this. There's only one reason. I can see in this passage, in context, why he cursed the fig tree and why it withered. And it wasn't for some weird theology. Listen, it's very clear because Jesus tells them the answer. Look, just you have to have help to miss this. You have to have religion to help it, to, to miss this. You have to have skepticism to miss this. You have to have lots of doubt and unbelief to miss what I'm about to read to you. You go look it up in your own Bible, Matthew 21, verse 18 through 22. Pre be prepared to be offended. If you don't get offended, then you didn't listen very clearly. Just saying. If you don't get offended by what's about to be said, then you need to ask yourself whether you're a real disciple of Jesus. Because a true disciple of Jesus doesn't hear what he always wants to hear. I, I, I don't pride myself in saying, oh, I'm a disciple of Jesus and, you know, I always hear what I want to hear. No, I know that Jesus is going to say things that are going to offend my mind. And if I'm a true disciple of Jesus, I'm going to dig deeper. I'm not going to bail on him just because it gets hard. Verse 21, then Jesus told them, in answer to their question, how did the fig tree wither so quickly? Verse 21, then Jesus told them, I tell you the truth. You know why he said that? Because everyone's going to think... They didn't mean what he's about to say. Okay? I know this is just a heavy buildup, okay? But he told them, I tell you the truth. In other words, I'm not lying. <laughs> Be prepared. Ready? If you have faith and do not doubt, you can do things like this and much more. Put the brakes on. Wait a minute. What? What? The disciples asked a question, and Jesus gave a very clear answer. How did the fig tree wither so quickly? Then Jesus told them, I tell you the truth. If you have faith and do not doubt, you can do things like this. Like what? 
cursing a fig tree, and the fig tree immediately withers and dies. And much more. I like that. And much more. You can even say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it will happen. You know, you want to know the reason why I believe Jesus said that? Most people will say, well, is it a figurative mountain? Is it a figurative fig tree? People, is it a figurative mountain? Is he talking about a real mountain? Of course he's talking about a real mountain. Of course he's talking about a real mountain. They're standing by one. If you read it in context, you can say to this mountain, this mountain, the one that they're standing by, he's talking about a real mountain. He's literally pointing at the mountain. This mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it will happen. Jesus ain't playing around. He ain't, he ain't talking figuratively. He isn't talking metaphorically. He's talking about true mountain-moving faith. If you how, how does this happen, Jesus? How can we move a mountain? Here's what he tells you. If you have faith and do not doubt, you can do these things and much more. Watch this. Verse 22. You can pray for anything. And if you have faith, you will receive it. <laughs> you have to have help to miss this, buddy. Look. <laughs> Come on. Y'all better, better be liking the snot out of this video. And you better be sharing it like crazy because people are not hearing the truth. They believe lies. Like, oh, well, maybe it's not God's will. Or maybe it's not the timing of God. I'm going to tell you a secret. Jesus never taught his disciples, ever, not one time, that someone didn't get healed because it wasn't the will of God. Never once, when a disciple asked Jesus why someone didn't get healed, did he ever tell them it was because of the timing of God. Never. Jesus was the perfect illustration of what it means to have faith. He demonstrated. How, how do I know that Jesus had faith? And Jesus wasn't doing these miracles out of his divinity. Let's go over to Acts. <clears throat> chapter 2 verse 22 people of Israel listen God publicly endorsed Jesus the Nazarene by doing powerful miracles wonders and signs through him as you well know okay so we see right here that Jesus was endorsed by God watch this people of Israel listen God publicly endorsed Jesus the Nazarene by doing powerful miracles, wonders, and signs through him. Through him. I know that there's three in one. We, we know that the Trinity is there, right? Jesus is God. But Jesus didn't do his miracles from his divinity. It's very important that we understand that God did the miracles through Jesus as a man. And that's what Acts chapter 2 verse 22 real, uh, reveals to us. That Jesus didn't do his miracles from his divinity. Jesus was a man. He was God. But he was also a man. When he operated on earth, he operated as a man. And God did miracles through the man Jesus. Not through the God Jesus. How do I know that? Because when the disciples asked him this very important question, how did the fig tree wither so quickly? Jesus did not, not one time in this little passage, did Jesus revert to his divinity to answer the question. The question, why did the fig tree wither? He did not reply, well, because I'm the son of God. <clears throat> he didn't do that. He didn't say, well, because I'm the Christ. He didn't do that. He told them, if you have faith and don't doubt, why could he say that with such confidence? Because he was a man operating in faith and not doubting. And he was demonstrating to his disciples what it looked like. Very important to know this. <clears throat> and then he says in verse 22, you can pray for anything and if you have faith, you will receive it. We water this down so badly. When they asked, how did this happen? Let's pay attention to what he did not say. He did not say, well, it was the will of God or timing or any of that nonsense. 
he just focused on faith. He took the opportunity when they asked this very important question to teach them about faith. Faith. We never talk about faith. And the preachers in the pulpit are, 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 are really messing us up. Jesus didn't use this opportunity to teach them that he was the son of God. I already said this, right? You'll notice in scripture that Jesus never single, never singled out the disciples. He never said, these apostles are the only ones who can do miracles. He never said that. Everybody will say, well, the, all the miracles died with the apostles. It doesn't say that in the Bible. Nowhere. People will say that. They assume it because of their circumstance and because of their experience. In fact, usually... He doesn't, he never, he, he says the opposite. He says, whoever believes in me will do the things I have been doing and greater things will he do because I'm going to the Father. John chapter 14, verse 12. I'll read it again. I tell you the truth. Anyone, doesn't say the disciples, doesn't say the 12 apostles, doesn't say specially gifted of people, doesn't say, well, you have to be some special person, doesn't say that. Anyone. Anyone, you can repeat this after me. Anyone who believes, anyone who believes, anyone who believes, and whoever believes, whoever believes, anyone who believes, anyone, 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 anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I'm going to be with the Father. And people will say, well, maybe he's talking about love. Yeah, he is talking about love and mercy. And mercy heals people. Just say it. You can ask for anything in my name, and I will do it. Oh, oh, so it's not just about doing good. It's about answered prayers. Look, verse 12 says, you can do the same things I've been doing and greater. And then verse 13 says, it's about prayer. It clarifies it for you in case you missed it. In case you read verse 12 and didn't believe that you could do those same works. Which What works? The only works that people remember Jesus for. Miracles, signs, wonders, healings. That's what he's talking about. Why would he... Why would anybody be dumb enough? I'm sorry. I don't want to say. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <clears throat> We're thick-headed. Okay? We're skeptical. We're full of doubt and unbelief. So when we read this, we want to jump to the conclusion that it's not referring to miracles. Of course it's referring to miracles because this is what Jesus was known for. You will do the same things I have been doing. What things have you been doing, Jesus? Healing everybody. That's what he's been doing. He goes into a town and they bring all the sick people. That's what he's known for. That's what his works were for. In fact... Let's just go over to John chapter 14 real quick. John chapter 14. I've got to find the scripture. Sorry. It says, if I do not do these works, you don't have to believe me. If I do not do these works, do not believe me. It's, it's John chapter 10. Sorry. That's why I couldn't find it. John chapter 10. Running out of time. John chapter 10. <clears throat> verse 37. Don't believe me unless I carry out my father's works, right? Talking about the miraculous. But if I do his work, believe in the evidence of the miraculous works I have done. Even if you don't believe me, then you will know and understand that the father is in me and I am in the father. Did you know that the father wants to be inside of you too? Jesus is, we get to inherit what Jesus had. Partakers of the divine nature, 2 Peter says. Don't believe me. Watch this. Don't believe me unless I do the works of my Father. So he's he's refuting the, the people that are coming against him in his message. Okay? We see that Jesus' works in John chapter 10 is referring to his miraculous works. But we know that John chapter 14 has got to be talking about his miraculous works. Not, not only that, but <clears throat> we know it at least has to do with answered prayers. Because the very next verse says, you can ask for anything in my name and I will do it. So what does that have to do with? Answered prayers is what it has to do with. Okay? So that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Wait a minute. You know how many times I've heard people say, well, it's all about the glory of God. And they'll say, well, that person didn't get healed and it's going to bring God glory. You know what Jesus says? That God gets glory when your prayers are answered. Look. You can ask for anything in my name and I will do it. So that the Son can bring glory to the Father. But we want to sit here and say, oh, well, God gets to the glory when our prayers aren't answered. Jesus says the opposite. Jesus says that when your prayers are answered, God gets glory. So you know what? We want to give God glory. We want to give God glory. So we need prayers answered. So you know what we need? We need to figure this out. 
Jesus talks about this. Yes, ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. We have to have faith. We have to have faith. If this scripture doesn't offend you, then you must be something special, man. <laughs> I need to touch you and get your special anointing and get and get healed from my own immaturity. Because this scripture is offensive. You know why? It makes me face myself. It makes me recognize my own shortcomings. And if it doesn't do that to you, then you're not really being a disciple. Disciples are, are, are being disciplined. The word has to cut somewhere. My, my grandpa used to say, if I go to church and my, my, my feet don't get stepped on, I didn't go to church. Look, our feet got to get stepped on, okay? People will say, but you have to have a special anointing and a gifting from God. Well, I don't agree. First of all, that's not what the Bible says, and the Bible actually shows the very opposite. If you look at Luke chapter 9, verse 1, verse 32, uh, we have a specific situation where Jesus anoints his disciples and gives them the power to over, gives them the power to cast out demons and heal people. Watch this. Luke chapter 9, verse 1 through 2 says, One day Jesus called together his 12 disciples and gave them power and authority to cast out all demons and to heal all diseases. Then he sent them out to tell everyone about the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. All right, so right there it makes it sound like, man, these people have to have a special calling by God, a special anointing. If you're not the 12 and you're out, first of all, it's untrue. In another passage, he did that to the 72. The 72 went out and healed people. You need to study your Bible. But in Luke chapter 9, we see that Jesus anoints them and gives them the power and authority to cast out demons and heal diseases. But then 49 verses later, John said to Jesus, Master, we saw someone using your name to cast out demons. But we told him to stop because he isn't in our group. What did Jesus say? Don't stop him. stop him. Anyone who is not against you is for you. You know what that tells me? You didn't have to be present. You didn't have to be there at Luke chapter 9 verse 1 where he gave the, the disciples authority to cast out demons. You didn't have to be there. You didn't have to be a part of their special little group. Just like John says, we saw someone using your name to cast out demons, but we told him to stop because he isn't in our group. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You know what John would be? John... The, the, the modern day people that don't believe in miracles, that think only all the, the miracles die with the apostles, man, they would all be in bed with John right now and say, yeah, John, you're right. We had to tell them to stop casting out demons and performing miracles because they're not one of you. And then Jesus would rebuke you and say, don't stop them. <laughs> don't stop them. Anyone who isn't against you is for you. Why did Jesus say not to stop them? Because Jesus understood it wasn't about special anointings and giftings. It was about faith. It's always been about faith. It's always been about faith. Always been about faith. So, guys, that's all I have for you today. Um, I'll put on another teaching talking about faith because I can't ever stop talking about faith. Faith is, faith is what Jesus taught about. Faith is what Jesus taught about. And so I hope this teaching encouraged you. You guys be blessed. And have a great day. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this teaching blessed you and, and inspired you and helped you out a little bit. Man, if, if it was a blessing for you, please uh, share the video, like it, leave a comment if you have questions. I'll be, I'll try to answer these questions and whatnot. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Go to our Facebook page and make sure you've already liked the page. Hover your mouse over following and make sure see first is checked. If there's a check mark there, then you know that you'll be seeing our videos in your newsfeed. Also, if you're wanting to support our ministry and help fund missions work and help uh, support drug and alcohol recovery, please go to our website, boldestalignedministries.com or www.balmzs.com and you'll see here there's a donate button. You just hit this donate button right there. It'll give you an opportunity to, to sow into the ministry. Right there, you can see Boulders Line Ministries. You can give 30 bucks a month, $50 a month, or $100 a month, or just a one-time gift if you want. Also, you can go to our website, 3rcandles.com. Remember, all the candles are handmade by our students in recovery, and so you can select from our wide range of products. I mean, we just have tons of candles, you can see right there. And also, be sure to sign up for the VIP offers. We can get 25% off your next purchase. You'll be able to receive offers we have. We're also gonna be doing some free test strips for fragrance as well so make sure that you sign up right here and, and all that good stuff so have a good day